my absolutely lovely Libra friends and welcome to your March 2020 horoscope where this month Libra right out of the gate we see a couple things going on. You can see that the majority of the planets are here to the right side of the chart of course if you're looking at it this way. So you know that because it's on this side what you're going to have is a pretty social month on your hands. And it's going to be a month where not only do we come in with Mercury still in retrograde, he's going to leave retrograde this month as well. Venus comes home into the energy of Taurus, but Venus is also your ruling energy. So when Venus is comfortable and working happily, the whole team is trying to win, right? So it's a wonderful energy. We're also going to celebrate the spring equinox just here on your opposite energy of Aries. So it is a pretty big month. Oh, and Saturn's also going to be moving into a Aquarius, which is so great for you because not only does this confirm for us that this is a pretty social month for you, it's also a month where your love peak will happen and love peak can be Libra. You're falling in love with yourself, you're falling in love with other people, you're falling in love with groups of people maybe even, and what it is is nice, deep, emotionally supported connections coming down from the heavyweights living down here in the fourth house. So let's jump in and put that whole picture together for you, okay? All right, right at the beginning of the month, we've got Mercury who is still in retrograde, but he's retrograde here in the energy of Pisces. Now, at the beginning of the month on the fourth, he's gonna continue that retrograde backwards into the energy of Aquarius. Now, Mercury retrograde here in the energy of Aquarius lights up your fifth house, okay? So one of the things I think of with Mercury retrograde in the fifth house is, Libra, are you playing? Are you having joy in your life? Are your children joyful? What's happening for your children this month? There could be lots of conversation around kids or maybe you're going back to it. I've told you this is a family, social, love peak time. There could be a baby coming back on your table. This could even be the baby that is your project that you wanted to start or something like that, right? The other thing I think of with... Um, this Mercury retrograde is Libra. If you felt kind of jaded in your relationships a little bit, this is an opportunity for you to relook at how you got into that jaded position. How did you get there so that you can start to peel out of it and allow yourself to be open to some joy, some play, some creativity, maybe even some love and romance. And if you've been in a coupled up relationship for a while, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, right? This is an energy to bring some heat back to the table and it's wonderful. And maybe the ways that you're doing it are very Aquarian. Maybe you're getting out there and meeting people, you're being social, you're doing things, you're studying something you love online, you're finally getting that digital media campaign off the ground. Whatever it is, it's wonderfully supported here in the fourth house and this retrograde is helping you to relook at that subject. Now keep in mind because Mercury is still in retrograde, it's not the best time to be making huge decisions, signing new contracts. Go back over what already was. Something else that's just popping into my my little space over here right now is the sun and Neptune are over here shining pretty bright in your sixth house so the sun is saying I need you to still look at this area so this area tells me that maybe health or your mental health and wellness are still a concern this month at least until the 20th when the sun moves on so could it just be that you need to have childlike faith or a brand new joyful, playful approach? Do you need to take a risk in how you're gonna deal with your health care, how you're gonna deal with a project, what you're gonna do for work? Something like that could be piquing your interest during this retrograde as well. Now we've also got Venus heading out of the energy of Aries and coming home into the energy of Taurus. Now Venus is also your ruling energy, so where she goes, what she's doing, who she interacts with, you want to pay attention to that. But coming home into the energy of Taurus is going to light up your 8th house. This is juicy and gushy and delicious and sensual and magnetic. This is a place where you sit down with your groupings of people, you go back over something, and you guys are having a delicious meal, or you're really having some deep emotional conversation, or you're talking about something intimate, your finances, your taxes, your counseling session, your healing. Maybe you're just really in love with something and you're delving into the juiciness of what could be happening up here. Now, I will tell you, if this happened to be a time where you were sitting down with a grouping of people because Uranus is the ruler of your fifth house energy Aquarius down here, this is looking to have some healing, right? This is looking to have some healing. So something may very much so be resolved there. And if this is a matter of looking to um, pay off debt, 
uh, get out of an illness, make some progress in some way, shape, or form, maybe even study astrology, this is brilliant because Venus also lives right here in your first house with you. So you are taking yourself more deeply into the projects and the people that are around you. How delicious is that? All right, on the ninth, we're going to have us a full moon happening back here in your 12th house in the energy of Virgo. Now, a full moon says we need to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment of some kind. Virgo says, okay, you don't have to eat the whole thing today. I'm going to show you step by step how we make these changes in this 12th house. And of course, the energy will be opposing the sun. So here in the sixth house as well. So one of the questions I have for you, Libra, is very truly, where do you have a behavior pattern, a belief pattern, something that you're living in here, right? An escape pattern that is not allowing you to shine in your own health over here. What is that that needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted? Do you have a project over here? You've been working on it behind the scenes. You're very busy. This full moon's going to help. Uh, either wrap up that project or course correct you so you can find the information you need and you're going to get ready to launch it out over here. It's a step-by-step -step process. The other thing I love about a moon here is truly Libra in, in yourself and in your relationships and in your world. If you've been feeling lonely or you've been feeling like it always looks the same, this is a wonderful energy that says go serve others and your cup will overfill. So think about that as you're experiencing that moon, okay? We have also got, on the 9th, Mercury coming out of retrograde. Cheers from everyone around the world. It's beautiful. So now is the time where you're going to have some forward motion. All of us have forward motion permission right here as we get to the 9th of March. Mercury now forward in this 5th house. Maybe you do want to go play. Maybe you do want to be social with groups of people. Maybe you do want to make joy a priority in your future life. Remember, Aquarius is very future-minded. This is an energy where if you found out that in order to connect and to play and to be a part of, you need a new computer or you need new technology, this could definitely be the energy to support you. Now, on the 16th, we get Mercury at his finest with he's with him being back in forward motion right here back into the energy of Pisces but remember Mercury in Pisces is is still kind of like He's in a retrograde because Mercury is not as powerful in this area, but you will be making new decisions about your daily routines, service to other people, your health, maybe a project, something like that will definitely be on your table for consideration, okay? And we know that because Mercury also rules um, your 12th house, excuse me, and the general, that something that's hidden will be coming to light that will allow you to make some new decisions as Mercury moves forward into the energy of Aries. Okay, on the 20th, the sun's trucking up here into the energy of Aries, into your opposite sign. So what we know, first of all, is it, it's Aries birthday time, but it's also the spring equinox. It's time for a new season. Unless, of course, you're one of our Libra friends who's in the southern hemisphere, then you are moving into your autumn, which it doesn't matter what season you're moving into. We are progressing forward, which is beautiful. Now, the sun here, this begins your yearly love peak, right? We've got most of the energy energies here to the right side of the chart. The sun is beaming and bright and motivated in your relationship house. So what have you seen during your um, retrograde time that will help you make healthier decisions here? You could be just very involved with groups or groupings of people. Making decisions around relationships, though, is going to be a priority for you here because the sun is motivated to make changes here. Now, Venus has traveled with Uranus as well, and Mars is down here in Capricorn. So the relationship that you'll be bringing in may be very different, but they're very supportive. They're very Team Libra, but they might not be wrapped in the package that you're used to looking for your relationships in. So be very open-minded with that movement of the sun, okay? Also on the 20th, we've got Mars and Jupiter here in a conjunction, and as they're working together, this is courageous energy, and it's grounded because it's in the energy of Capricorn. So this means in your home, your family, your emotional security and psychology, whatever this looks like, clearing out things from your past and making them valuable assets to move forward, this is a day where I will tell you if something comes up to be handled, go for it. It is delicious, courageous energy, so Go for it, okay? On the 21st, we see Saturn taking his move forward into the energy of Aquarius. Now, Saturn rules both Capricorn 
and Aquarian energy in traditional astrology. So Saturn is still as equally at home over here in the energy of Aquarius. He just becomes more intellectual since Aquarius is an air sign and a lot less concrete. So here in the fifth house, digital media, digital marketing, technology, friends that are long distance from you, groupings that are long distance from you, your future. Here's a good question, Libra. What you're doing today, will that be able to sustain you 15 years from now? Or what's your plan for that 15-year mark? When this moves forward, when we get past today, as the generations are swapping and coming in, what do you do? What do you have that can sustain you? The other question I have is, who are the groupings you're supporting with? Right? Who's on board with Team Libra? Who are you lending your support to? Right? This is some first house energy. Who are you lending your support to? Because you want to make sure you're in alignment with people that are moving towards the same causes, towards the same joy, towards supporting children. Whatever this looks like for you, your project, you want to make sure you've got a squad behind you that is truly, truly Team Libra. And what may need to happen from March to July while Saturn is in the energy of Aquarius is you may have to spend some time with the groupings of people in your life and see who and what is really real. So don't be surprised when Saturn starts making you feel all serious about getting your friendship life and your joy life together, okay? As we get, where did the moon run off to? As we get to the 24th, we're giving Aries a birthday present with a new moon in the energy of Aries. Now here's another little thing I want you to consider, however, okay? The new moon is the time where we plant our seeds of intention, but like I said, some of your open enemies, some of the people that are not an, in alignment with the Libra tribe, you may need to ask to see them at this new moon. At this new moon, what you don't necessarily have to say is, show me my enemies. What you say is, show me the relationships that are of my highest good and show me the relationships I can serve to the highest good as well. And I'm telling you, an Aries who is bossy, who is warrior, who is about me, will reveal this energy to you in the next four weeks and then you can respond to Saturn much better. Not to mention Mars on the 30th is going to scoot on over here into Aquarius as well with Saturn energy. So now your energy is very focused on being serious, on being unique, on taking actions that are future oriented but are also group oriented. This is a place where in your fifth house, if in your life you're not quite there at that goal yet of achieving your freedom, this energy is going to help you to do that. But first it's going to make you very, very busy in the joyful, risk-taking, sports playing, having children area of your life. This is also phenomenal for creating your intellectual strategy for your new projects that you are maybe, maybe beginning. So I love this because you're going to create at a high level because things are in the eighth house. It's really a, actually a lovely weeding out energy for you this month, but you have forward permission to take action to start letting things roll out and progress you forward. It's going to be a brilliant month, Libra. I hope you enjoy it. Please let me know what happens and what manifests for you down in the comment section below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next month, Libra. Bye.